wonder if I record this, whether it'll work. I can switch my computer to audio. Let me get yourself for Um, you have Mike and Speakers checkbox, don't you? Yeah, well, I had a text phone call. Um, so we can switch them. I, I can't quite understand what you're saying. That's going to be a little bit of a problem. My phone, my phone is, or my phone, my computer is checked to um, phone call. I can check it to computer audio. Maybe that makes a difference. Does it? Have you tried it in the past? Yeah, that just gives us the audio through the computer into the phone. Though. Well, let's see if we can get audio through the computer. Because I'm not sure I'm going to be able to understand you well enough on my phone. See, I've got it on my speaker phone right now, but that's completely different than Google phone, uh, where I'm hearing through the speakers of the computer. Yeah, all right. Let's see if we can get you switched over to, yeah, just put it on mic and speakers and that should do it. So are we doing more calculus today? Um, I was hoping we could go over um, ACT stuff. Ah, yeah. I'm going to hang this phone up now that I can hear you. All right. And uh, if this audio cuts out, holler, and we'll go back to the method we were just using. Can you hear me okay, Sarah? All right. Yeah, okay. Cool. All right. You want to do ACT stuff tonight? Uh, yeah, because I have that coming up on Tuesday. Ah, okay. Let's see. We've been working on SAT, haven't we? Yeah. But you have the ACT test coming up on t shortly? Uh-huh. I've got some. I've got some good stuff to do. Here, I've got the perfect thing to do. I got these from another student, and what they are is practice ACT questions heavily dominated by geometry. Because this teacher realized that a lot of really fast track students, like yourself, it's been a long time since you had geometry, and. So yeah. that's what you tend to forget more than anything else. Yeah, this is this is a cool thing that I, I've found here, I think, because somebody had to put this together. When you take a typical practice ACT test, it's not weighted more heavily towards geometry, and it needs to be because that's the thing most kids have the hardest problem with because it's been... They're further remo removed from geometry than they are algebra. So in a circle with radius 6, what's the measure of an arc whose length is 2 pi? Um, not, drawn, not, not drawn to scale. Um, I don't know what the answer is at the moment, although, yeah, I kind of do. It's close to scale. Um, I don't remember how to do these. What's the circumference of this circle equal to? Um, pi times 36. 2 pi r, uh -huh. not... not not the area. Oh, circumference. Sorry. Okay. The circumference is 2 pi r. Well, r is 6, so the circumference is, its length is 12 pi. Okay. So, if this length is 2 pi, what is this angle? Um. What person? <laughs> what percentage of the circle is it? Uh, one sixth. Oh, oh, okay. So then you do one. 
you do 180 divided by Not 60. Not 180. What's the entire circle? Oh, 360 okay. divided by 60. So that is 60 degrees. Some of these are pretty hard, actually. I mean, these are not cupcake problems, for sure. But you don't want cupcake problems. You want hard ones. You know how to do all the cupcake problems. Yeah. So they want the radius of the circle. They want OB or OA. So we have four, four. Would it be okay to assume that um, AB bisects CD? Yes, you can, because it makes okay. the right angle. If it makes so, the right okay. angle, it bisects CD. So what is, right. give me some dimensions I can write in here. Um, so you have C to E is four. Okay. E to D is 4. E to B? Um, oh, E to D is 4. Okay. Yeah. O to E is 3. Um, moon, I don't really... Yeah, don't give up yet. You can get it. Well, you've got... How would you find what B, E is? thinking. For some reason I thought I knew exactly how to do this. Now I'm not sure. Hold on. Oh, uh, yeah. No, we, we can figure it out. Remember one thing about circles. All radiuses are equal. What, what is OC? which is a radius. Oh! Interesting. Okay, I never thought of doing it that way. Um, so it would be like 9 plus 16. This is a 3, 4, what kind of time? 5, 2, 4, 5. Learn to recognize mm -hmm. that because most of the questions are either going to be a 3, 4, 5 right triangle or a 5, 12, 13 or multiples of those. So there's your answer immediately. Yeah, and you're right. That You have to notice that because I don't see any other way to do it. Now I, when I looked at it again the first time, I couldn't, I couldn't think of how to do it. And then I realized you have to make that radius line. Okay. Isn't it always like one to a half or something? Okay. Or yeah. I think I remember. I remember doing You're this. Right. I don't remember how to do right. this. Here, let's go, let's review it. It's worth reviewing. First of all, if you start from the middle of the circle, this angle X is always the same as that arc. Okay? So if that's 60 okay. degrees, that's a 60 degree arc. Well, if I subtend the same arc by drawing something that intersects on the circumference, this is always half of that. So if this is equal to that and this is half of that, that's a two-to-one relationship without knowing anything about the specific angles. In other words, this is one-half x here from geometry. There's two geometry theorems at play here. There's the one that says if it starts at the center, it's equal, and there's the one that says if it starts on the circumference, it's one-half that arc. 
Well, that means the relationship between that x and that x is 2 to 1. Or, in this case, 1 to 2, since they're talking about ACB to AOB. So it's 1 to 2. And, yeah, not, not an unimportant distinction, since they have both answers on there. I don't know how the 2 to 1 ended up down there instead of next to the B, but somebody's printer wasn't working that day. 50? See, these don't even, these aren't even numbered. Uh, that's why I know somebody put this together, which is cool, actually, that somebody did that. My other kid's parents did this one time, and I was really impressed that she did that. All right. You having sound problems? Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Okay. The figure below. DB, DB, check it. So this arc here is 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. What's the measurement of this angle? 140, right? Because it's the line? Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a little worrisome when there's so simple. I know, I know, something. I know. And that is something you need to look at. Sometimes if it seems too simple, it's worth a second analysis. But you're always battling that concept with, the one that says, I'm running out of time. <laughs> Can you read that? Is that large enough for you to read? Yeah. Would it be um, 200? Or is that weird? No, let's see. I didn't read it yet. BAC is 100, which means this is 100, which means that's 260. Half of that is 130. Okay, you want me to go through that logic again? This, yeah. this angle, oh, excuse me, I got that wrong. BAC is 100, which means this is 200, which means the rest of it is 160, half of which is 80. So AB is 80. Did you get it? Yeah. And I went through it twice and once the wrong way, so if you get it, I understand. I'll go through it again. Um, hmm, I think we can do 33 without seeing the last answer. Let's look at it. Chords A, B, and C, D intersect at E. If A, E is 6 and E, B is 4, C, E is X and E, D is 6X, then X equals, yeah. This is, I've actually never seen a problem that requires you to know this theorem on the ACT. Uh, I haven't taken an ACT recently, but I've been through an awful lot of practice tests. And this is not one of the theorems they expect you to know. However, as long as we're looking at it, the theorem says that if you have two intersecting chords inside of a circle, then this piece times this piece is equal to this piece times this piece. So we would have 6 times 4, 24, equals x times 6x. 24 equals 6x squared, x squared equals 4, x equals 2. Okay? Okay. All right. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on that theorem because I don't think it's, you're going to come in, you're going to see it on the test. So, very heavily weighted in geometry. Okay. Let's 
the area of the shaded region. Shaded region problems are always what? Sarah? You there? Um, shaded region problems are always exactly. what kind of problems? Uh, um, shading? Yeah, sort of. Can you hear me, Sarah? Okay, I got it back. You yeah, it's back. Sometimes, sometimes I can hear you and you can't hear me, and sometimes it's the reverse. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Number 50. Um, it's a shaded area shaded. problem. Shaded region problem. What kind of problems are these always? Um, like area and subtraction? Subtraction. They're all <laughs> subtraction problems. Always. So conceptually, what are we going to do? Um, what are we going to subtract? We are going to subtract the area of the circle from the area of the square. Okay, and then we're going to do what? Divide it by two. Okay, because perfect. What's the area of the square? Um, 36. Six is the diameter. Of the circle? But wouldn't it also have to be like... Excuse the me, the excuse me, excuse me. 36. Minus, yeah. minus what? Um, minus 6 pi? Mm, now it's, now pi? it's pi r squared. Yeah. Area of the circle, what's pi? the radius? 3. Oh, oh, so um, 9 pi. So... 36 minus 9 pi, and you said all divided by 2 because we're only dealing with half. We're not dealing with all four corners. So here's our correct answer. What does that match? Um, maybe like 15, 18. So at This is another one exactly the same as that other problem. So, what's the answer here? Oh my gosh. A, B is six. Yeah, and so then B. Oh, oh A, B is six. A, E is two. C, E is one. What's the length from E to D? They put it on here. So they put it on here twice, which leads me to believe that maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you might encounter this problem on the ACT test. Okay, so so A E, A, e is two. What's E B? E B has to wait. E D? E B is a e boy. E B. Okay. So if A E is two, then E B would also no would have to be because it goes straight a, across. A B is six. Yeah. A E is two. What's this portion? Also two? No. Four. Oh no. That'd have to be six four. Minus two, okay. So that's two, that's four. The theorem says what? That, this that it's two x? Not two x. Well or two times one, the other one. If one times the other. Yeah, so if that one was x. So if it's two and four, the product is eight. So that's one, this has to be eight. Okay. Not drawn to scale, so clearly. In other words, 1 times 8 has to be equal to 2 times 4. It's an easy theorem to memorize. It's just that I've never seen it on a practice test before this one. And I'm not sure this is a practice test, but it 
obviously was made from what looks like practice tests. So, okay, how about 34? Um. This also is similar to one we've already done. Let's draw a picture. Sometimes a picture can be really helpful in these situations. So the distance from the center of the circle to a chord is 5. You always measure it perpendicularly. And the length of the chord is 24. So this is the same problem as we did earlier. What's the radius of the circle? So you know it's 12, so 5, 12. This is that second Pythagorean theorem, triangle that yeah. you said you want to memorize. 5, 12, 13. 13, okay. And you could certainly apply the Pythagorean theorem here. You know, you get the square root of 144 plus 25, which is 169, and the square root of 169 is 13. So it's not like you have to memorize it. But you run into this one and the 3, 4, 5 so frequently that it really saves a lot of time if you do memorize it. Okay. Again? A third problem. Amazing. All right, well, let's do it as long as we... Um, okay, so AE is 6. Well, this is a duplicate. It's the same. Yeah, we just... Oh, hold on a second. No, it isn't quite a duplicate. This one, they gave you AE and they gave you AB. You actually had to do an intermediate step to come up with EB. This one here, they've given you EB. In other words, they give you AE is 6, they give you EB is 4, so the product has to be what? 24? Uh -huh. And then they give you CE is X, and they give you ED is 6X, so that product is... 6X squared? Yeah, so 24 yeah. has to be equal to 6X squared. So oh, so then... It's all for X, you get 2. It, it's a similar problem. Last time through here, I thought it was a typo, and it was exactly the same problem, but it's not. Other problem, they didn't give you each segment. They gave you this segment and the whole thing. All right, the one thing you want to be able to do for sure is given any part information about a circle, you want to be able to come up with the other two things. In other words, if they give you area, circumference, or radius, you can come up with the other two. Obviously, if they give you radius, you can come up with circumference and area. But if they give you area, you can come up with radius, and then you can come up with circumference. And if they give you circumference, you can come up with radius and then area. So you need only one of these three pieces of information to come up with all three. And be good at doing it, because you have to do it a lot on this test. Okay. So you need the general formula. So, what's the radius? What's oh, um, isn't it like two diet times the diameter or something? Diameter. Don't remember it like. Pi times remember it as this. And the reason R is because this is pi r squared. Notice the same three characters are in both. Besides that, even though it is two times the or it's pi times the diameter, which looks simpler, it's not simpler really. Everything about a circle has to do with radius, not diameter. Area is a function of radius, circumference a function of radius. So let's remember these both as a function of radius, not as diameter. Just know diameter is twice the radius. That's all you have to know. 
Okay? So, okay. if I know those two formulas and they tell me that the radius is what? Um, they, so they tell me the diameter is 8. What is the radius? Then you know the radius is one half of the diameter. So it's 4. Mm -hmm. So 8 pi. Okay. All right. What is the area of a circle that is inscribed in a square with diagonal 8? It's a good one to end on. <laughs> So we're inscribing in a square with a diagonal measuring 8. What's the size, the area of a circle inscribed in that? Oh, man, my artwork is better tonight. <laughs> I, can't, I can't always make good circles and squares. And I can't get close tonight. All right. So what's the area of that circle? Um, okay, so the radius is, no, oh, never mind, it doesn't tell you. Um, kind of trying. Well. Huh? Is that one of my special triangles? Um, Maybe. I'm having trouble. How would you do it because it goes past the edge of the circle? Well, you can't use this for your radius. You've got to figure out what half of the square side length is. In other words, we need to solve for x, and then half of x will be the radius of our circle. Okay, so here's the triangle. This is x. What is x? Um, Given that that triangle is a 45-45. Okay, so x is going to be 4? Standard one is 1, 1 mm -hmm. square root of 2. Okay. Well, so or, it would have to be. or they may they may teach it differently, and it's actually better to use the other one. It's also square root of two, square root of two, two. This makes coming up with the similarity ratio a little easier. What's the similarity ratio if I use this one as my standard? Um. So x would be the square root of eight. Well, what's the similarity ratio is the proportion of a given side to the same side on the other triangle. The hypotenuse is 8. This hypotenuse is 2. What's the similarity ratio? 4. 4 to 1. 4 to 1. Okay. What's this side over here become? Square root of 4? 4 root 2. This is, oh, okay. this is also 4 root 2. Just an easy way. In other words, if you have this one memorized, then every time you run into a right triangle that's a 45, 45, 90, you can figure out these dimensions by comparing it to this one. You could also have compared it to the first one I drew on there, which was the one I usually use, which is 1, 1 square root of 2. But now the similarity ratio becomes 8 divided by square root of 2, which, guess what, is also the same as 4 root 2. So either one gets you to the answer. So if 4 root 2 is x, what's the radius? Oh my gosh, okay. So... 4 root 2 is x, so the radius would have to be 2, no. Half of that. Four, 1? What's half of 4 root 2? Oh my gosh. Um, 4 root 2 over 2 is like 2 root? That's the radius. Now, what's the area of the circle? 
general form formula? Oh, um, pi r squared. Okay. What's pi r squared in this case? So, 8 pi, 8 pi? Yes. Okay. That was confusing. Okay. And that was a lot harder than it looked when it was, we first looked at it. Yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. All right. Good going. Sarah, I will talk to you next Tuesday. Okay. Thank All you. Right, bye bye.